We're very lucky to have with us here the world expert on cultural intelligence. Our keynote speaker this afternoon is a thought leader in so-called CQ and in global leadership. He's the author of various books, including The Cultural Intelligence Difference, which made it to uh, his new book. Previous book, Leading with Cultural Intelligence, made it to the bestseller list of the Washington Post. He's president and partner of the Cultural Intelligence Center in Michigan, and he spent 20 years in the positions with NGOs and teaching at universities throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, give the usual very warm you're welcome to our keynote speaker, David Livermore. Thank you so much, Francis, and thank you to all of you. Uh, I must tell you, this is my first Eura event, and uh, already I'm finding out you are a lively bunch. Uh, I was a little nervous, given the way that Tad was introduced, that I was going to have to follow that whole sing-along kind of thing, and uh, I'm quite grateful that I didn't have to. But I must tell you, of all the various groups that I have a chance to talk to about our work in this field of cultural intelligence, uh, I'm hard-pressed to think of a group that is better poised than yourselves to really make a difference in the globe as it relates to how we help people better improve the way that they interact cross-culturally. Uh, now, you may be wondering why it is that Tad and Dominic invited an American to come talk about cultural intelligence. Last I checked, this is not necessarily what we're most renowned for in the world. And uh, lest the non-Americans in the room need any more ammunition, uh, perhaps you'll enjoy this little video clip if you missed it a few years back from our Miss America campaign. Recent polls have shown a fifth of Americans can't locate the U.S. on a world map. Why do you think this is? I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some people out there in our nation don't have that, and uh, I believe that our ed education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, and I believe that they should, uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S., um, or should help South Africa, and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries, so we will be able to build up our future for Thank you very much, South Carolina. <laughs> okay, so now, poor Caitlin, some might say, perhaps this is just nerves, though she answered questions previous to this quite articulately and very poised, so it's, it's hard to understand why she suddenly stumbled so much when asked a little bit about geography and global understanding. Uh, but actually, as we've researched this phenomenon of cultural intelligence that I'm going to tell you a little bit about this afternoon, We've actually found that there's no consistent predictor that where you're from shapes whether or not you're culturally intelligent or not, believe it or not. And one of the things that I sometimes find is I interact with people who are preparing for their own global assignments or interact with various companies around the globe, is that for the most part, people usually give nodding assent to this important capability of cross-cultural understanding. But I also find that it's often one of the first things to get tossed aside when budgets are tight. And oftentimes the pushback is like, okay, yeah, 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 we, we get it, but I mean, isn't this kind of common sense? Like you need to treat people with respect, have some basic social skills, and never rip on somebody else's culture, even if they do it themselves. And, and I will grant them that for the most part, common sense and some basic social skills will get us along through a lot of different situations. Uh, if we come in here to Bucharest for just a few days and largely are just interacting with each other, well-traveled people, it might be that a lack of cultural intelligence isn't going to play out all that significantly for some of you. Uh, but as you know well, given the work that you do, when it becomes very relevant is when suddenly there's a stress involved. When suddenly time pressure comes into play and we're no longer sitting in a beautiful room like this talking about the different time orientations of various cultures, but instead are suddenly find that we're not going to be able to deliver to a client because of different time orientations. And what begins is just a nice little, oh yeah, we all approach time differently, suddenly arose into mutual distrust, saying you can't trust those people to deliver or you can't trust those people to 
understand the local realities. 